In this video, I'm going to be telling you about my best tips to share in Sea of Thieves that will make your pirating experience a whole lot easier. All of these could save you time, save you in a life or death situation, and make you a more knowledgeable player. And when you play with your friends later and they say, how did you do that? You'll share this video right here. There it is, a perfect fort of the damned waiting for you to tuck on and steal. You sail over to Cannon Cove to find a rowboat so you can row over to the fort. Once you get there though, you realize that there aren't any rowboats around the shore and have to swim for it. Who knows how long they have left to finish it. So you jump in the water and start your swim. As you swim though, your hand is getting tired of holding forward and pushing the sprint button. Ah, my hand, my hand is cramping. That's where this tip comes in handy. If you go in the settings and go to the controls of whatever you're using, you can find a button hotkey for auto run. This way you can let go of the button or the stick while your pirate still swims on. This tip also helps with running too, but I don't use it that often personally. Fair warning though, don't use this to get up and go off doing something because you still have to look out for any sharks or sirens blocking your path. And speaking of robots, you know all those times when you found a rowboat and went to go dock it, but you took a little too wide of a turn and ended up having to do another go around and have to readjust your rowboat, just wasting precious time that you have in your play session. Well, not many people know about this, but there are buttons for holding one paddle in place while you row with the other. This will make your boat turn without going forward so you have more precise movements and can dock your rowboat even quicker. On keyboard, it's keys Q to hold the left one and E to hold the right one. On controller, you use LB for your left oar and RB for your right oar. I've heard so many people get this wrong who have been sailing on bigger boats, but if you're on a sloop and you're in headwind, keep your sail pointed forwards at all times if you can't catch wind. There have been too many times where I've argued with friends about keeping sails forward in a headwind. Sloops are the fastest going against wind if you point your sails forward. If you're on a brig or galleon, the sails go in the direction of the wind for fastest speed, but write this down on your freaking hand if you need to. Sloop sails go straight in headwind. For the love of God. If you're a paranoid pirate just like the rest of us, you constantly look around the horizon while doing something on an island because you don't want to be off doing something one minute and then the next minute see the remains of your ship floating up on the shore. Oh no. <laughs> One way to combat this and to feel a little less paranoid is to park your ship on the back side of the island. If you're on the outer edges of the map, park your ship on the side of the island closest to the edge of the map. This way you'll have the least amount of exposure and your chances of being sunk significantly decrease. If you're on the inner parts of the map, there isn't really a safe part of the island to hide in, but if you see a reaper on your map and you don't want to engage in any PvP, then park your ship opposite of where they are in the horizon. With Season 9 came a significant nerf to a bunch of world events. They're now scaled for each crew, meaning that they should take the same amount of time to beat, give or take a couple minutes. But there also came a nerf to skeletons and skeleton force, specifically the ones on the Fort of Fortune. Now most of them are easy to kill, but those gold skeletons can be real b they can absorb multiple shots and take up precious time, but there's a faster way to deal with them. The easiest way to deal with these guys is to either lead them into water, throw water on them, or puke on them to make them rust. Once you do that, pick a gun of your choice and shoot at them. They should all be one tap now and should take significantly less time to handle, so you can get to the real juicy part of the PvE. You gonna make me act up. And if for some reason there isn't any water or worms around you, corral them and firebomb them while you wait for them to die from fire damage. Sometimes when you get sunk by a PvP god after grinding out a few good world events or sank a couple of sweaty boats, you'll want to give out all this rage and put your fellow Sea of Thieves player down. But for mentality reasons, it's best just to give a good GG's and well play to your opponent. There will always be someone better than you at something, and you'll always cross paths. If you can't do that, then it might be best to get up and just do something else for a bit. You'll realize how stupid you were about being mad at a game. Hotkey food. It's so much more simpler to press one button and have your food ready to be eaten in an intense fight than having to button mash to get your food out. It could literally mean life or death in a PvP encounter. Also follow my Twitch where I might be live right now, and if you want to learn about the five stages of Season 8's Hourglass mode that everyone goes through, then click right here.